Good to see you, Natasha. So let's talk about this. Uh, in a hypothetical presidential race, as it stands right now, where does Biden's re-election chance stand against either Trump or DeSantis? Against uh, former President Trump, it's around about a jump ball as to which of those candidates would win. You, we see different things in different polls, and of course it is worth emphasizing that polling two years out from an election is of very limited utility. But certainly President Biden seems to fancy his chances against former President Trump, and he has made comments that imply that he would be almost certain to seek a second term if he thought Trump would be his opponent. Now, when it comes to uh, the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, there's less uh, persuasive polling about that because on a nationwide basis, Governor DeSantis uh, does still have more don't knows than most uh, candidates. But I think among uh, political observers, there's a feeling that DeSantis would be a strong candidate, perhaps a stronger candidate than Trump, and would be a candidate who would make Democrats very nervous. Yeah, I know we're going to be talking more about that uh, in the coming months and years as we get closer. But let's talk about midterms, because we are watching almost all of these neck and neck races moving in the GOP's direction now. Why has the Republican position strengthened so considerably in just the past few weeks? I think there are a few reasons, and you're quite right to point out that the needle is definitely moving in the Republican direction. A specific polls aren't necessarily always accurate to the percentage point, but they're very good at tracking a trend, and the trend is clearly moving toward Republicans. One big reason, and it was mentioned in Evans' report, is the salience of the economy and inflation, the primacy of those issues really becoming apparent. It is now several months since the Supreme Court struck down Roe versus Wade. There there is some anecdotal evidence that abortion may be not quite as big an issue as it was a couple of months ago. And of course, we do have specific factors to individual races as well. The most clear example, perhaps, being John Fetterman's rather halting performance in that uh, debate in Pennsylvania. That does seem to, per potentially at least, have harmed Fetterman's chances and aided the momentum of his Republican opponent, Mehmet Oz. Right. And we have been tracking uh, issues voters are looking at, as you mentioned, the economy and inflation seem to be emerging now as, as that top issue. How can Democrats craft a message around this as inflation becomes such an issue under President Biden specifically? Well, the president himself has tried to make the argument that he is tackling inflation and that Republicans have no plan. And the latter part of that argument was also made by former President Obama. As for President Biden, he obviously uh, foregrounds the Inflation Reduction Act, its capacity to reduce prescription drug prices. But the president and Democrats generally are very eager to make this election a choice between them and the Republicans, not just a referendum on their own performance. So they keep citing a, a plan that was initially put forth by Senator Rick Scott that would have had Medicare and Social Security up for renewal or rejection by Congress every few years. They think that is a scary concept to many Americans, and that's why they're putting such emphasis on that proposal. And are you seeing right now, I mean, it seems like there's a surge in recent rhetoric over the fears about the future of democracy. Is this landing with voters and which voters? That's a great question. It is clearly something that Democratic voters are very concerned about. And it's something that we've seen President Biden make really major speeches about. The question, I think, Natasha, is does it win over voters in the middle ground or does it just preach to the choir? Does it only affect or only resonate with voters who would vote for Democrats anyway? I think that is the danger. The danger for Democrats is that that argument just doesn't seem so relevant or so resonant with people who are really trying to cope with putting food in the fridge and the inflation levels that we're seeing, which are hovering around a 40-year high. Absolutely. Niall Stanich, always appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Natasha. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.